All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're taking a look at my 2022 GMC Yukon XL SLE trim. SLE is kind of the base trim. There's SLT, there's AT4, there's Denali. This is the base trim. I want to kind of go through the, the, the features, how this, you know, the different features, how things work, the taking it for a drive, just kind of go through this and really explain why I chose the SLE trim as opposed to SLT. SLT is a little more popular. SLE's got the basic trim, but I think it's a better value than the SLT, and we'll go through and I'm going to show you why. But this has just a few options on it. This just has the, the color is the, called the satin steel. This is kind of like a light gray, dark silver metallic paint. It really, it really looks great. I only saw, I've only seen it a couple times in person before I ordered this. Now, I ordered it back in November, like middle of November 2021, and it was delivered right at the end of, of March. So it took about five months to get this. And I ordered it not, think, not knowing whether or not we're gonna, we were going to need it. And thankfully, we, it came in at the perfect time because those of you who have watched the channel know that I've ordered a Tesla Model Y. And I ordered that back in August 2021 as kind of the new family car, the seven-seat option. And I ordered this in November thinking, hey, it'd be awesome to have kind of like a road trip vehicle to have. You know, we'll see when the Tesla comes in and see which one we want to keep. Well, the Tesla hasn't come in. It's now April. The test was still delayed and who knows when it's going to come in. So I'm glad this came in the end of March and we picked this up. And this has been kind of really my wife is the primary driver of this car. But it has it's, it seats eight people. So, you know, two in the front and then it has two full rows and it has cargo behind that. So as far as carrying people and cargo, this thing is awesome. This is this is this is exactly what this is meant to do. So as far as option goes, we have the satin steel metallic paint. That's about a $500 option. And then the only other option is the Duramax diesel 3.0 liter engine on this paired with the 10-speed transmission. And that what that combination gets you is a very high MPG rating. I think it's rated at like 27, 26 or 27 highway, 22, 20. I, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll show you the sticker. But I want to just tell you guys, uh, I just took this on a road trip got back last week we did it was almost a thousand miles almost a thousand miles most of it was highway driving and we got close to 30 miles to the gallon driving on the highway at highway speeds the highway speeds were from 75 to 80 miles an hour and we were going that or better the whole time and this thing just did awesome 30 miles to the gallon so if you're thinking oh i need to i need to get a minivan because a minivan minivan gets good gas mileage well Take a look at this diesel engine and this, these, big, these big GM SUVs because now miles per gallon, this is getting the same or better. I had a Honda Odyssey, a 2014 and a 2019, and this is, this is doing better miles per gallon than that with this, with this engine. And this thing can tow almost 8,000 pounds too. I, I've towed with this too. I took my trailer out the other day. So I've had a little experience with it now, and now that I've had it for a few weeks and put some miles on it, I want to kind of just do kind of a walkthrough and show you everything about this vehicle. All right, got it pulled out here, got the engine running. You can hear the engine. It's not very loud. That, that Duramax really just, it's really quiet. And when you're driving it, we'll get, on, we'll get it on the road here in just a bit. But when you get it on the road, it's even less quiet than, than just idling. So this is the XL, the XL version. Now, they no longer put the, so if you see on the badging here, it says Yukon. They no longer put the XL badging on there. They just put Yukon. This is the XL version. You can tell how long it is. You get the 18-inch wheels standard. You can't upgrade to the 20s on the SLE trim, but it's probably a $1,200 option. So this is kind of this was kind of a budget build on this truck. We wanted to keep it as economical as possible, with this being just kind of a kid's car, road trip, everyday use. Kids just abuse things, so we wanted to keep it. Uh, it's kind of really as affordable as possible. It has a hitch. It has a cover here. I just took this off because I just towed with this the other day. Towed great really did great miles per gallon goes down i mean i towed was going 65 was towing about at 5,000 pounds and it we got about 13 miles of the gallon it's pretty good all right on the sle trim you don't get a power lift gate so it's manual you just got to lift up it, it it's it's assisted in the back here now this is if you let me show you down here below look at that independent rear suspension this is the first time gm's done this in their full-size suvs they have a full independent suspension now the sle trim we're not getting magnetic rides control or any kind of air ride suspension it's just shock coil over 
shocks and springs. But you're getting that, it's kind of a, a more comfortable ride now that it has those independent rear suspensions in the back. So here in the back we have a little cover that lifts up, put some more storage there. You didn't get that in the past with these, with these because that floor had to be higher with that solid rear axle. Power outlet here in the back. Now these seats that are folded down, the third row is folded down right now, but it can be lifted up and you kind of have to climb in. It's not power up or down. In this, you just gotta pull. You just kind of gotta pull them up manually. You gotta climb up in here, which, you know, that's another thing with the SLE trim is you don't get power folding, retracting, third or second rows. Those are all manual. Those are all manual seats. Luckily, our kids are old enough. I mean, our we've got kids who can do that if if needed. If you wanna if you wanna lay those seats down, just flip those latches up right there, and flip that latch up right there. The headrest fold down, but three full seats here, three full seats. So you got six, six people and two, and a driver and a passenger up front. So to close this down, I'm just, you just got to lift. You just, it's a manual. That, that's the only thing my wife was like super concerned about was that manual lift gate in the back. Also, one thing I found out you don't, you do not get in the SL E trim is you do not get auto dimming side view mirrors and there's no blind spot monitoring, which I think is a big miss for GM. A vehicle this big, you kind of need blind spot monitoring system. There's no indicator on that. You are getting LED running lights, LED headlights. You got it like a uh, fog lights. This blacked out grill, actually I like the look of this grill. This grill looks pretty good black with the GMC lettering, kind of a chrome trim around it. Headlights, headlights look good, so you're getting the LED headlights. A fixed running board on the outside. All right, let's jump in, we'll take a look at some of the features inside. Okay, here's the second row. All of this from really the armrest up is all soft touch materials. I don't think it's a leather, I think it's a, um, probably a synthetic but it really feels good this is a hard plastic but you have nice storage here little storage here and then one thing that I thought was kind of strange is the rear passengers have door lock and unlock which I thought that was interesting there's kind of a wood simulated wood paneling trim with a, with a little chrome strip there I think it looks good kind of a brushed nickel handle with a chrome ring here in the back we have the f the three seats here it's a 60 40 split so this side on the driver's side it folds down the two seats fold down there and then on the passenger side that one just folds down so if i just lift this up twice so if i lift up once that will sink down that's normally how the how the kids are getting in and out so we'll lift lift that up once and the kids can kind of just crawl in the back there now in the the third row the third row has great leg room for the third row. It really does. Like an adult fits back there just fine. It does have USB-C charging point, cup holder, and USB-C and cup holder on that side too. So you've got four cup holders back here, two USB charging ports, and three full shoulder straps here in the back, which is great. The, the vents are up in the ceiling which I'm glad to see that. That's kind of the same as in years past. And then the passengers do have their own lights. They can touch on and off. AC system is uh, can be independently controlled in the rear. Right here we have different modes. You can lock it out up in the front screen. The driver can lock this out and change it for the passengers. So if the kids aren't old enough to do that. You do have USB charging ports here. And we have a 110. We have a 110 outlet, charge a laptop, something like that. Now if I pull up on this another time, it releases. But if you open the, you open up that seat, that Ford, the, this is the 60% side, driver side, that pops open. It's all manual, so you're not getting any power assistance with this. You'd have to get up to the SLT trim to get like power assisted seats it does take a little effort for a young kid they might struggle to get this up this side so that way 
that way we probably we probably use that side the most one thing i think is a little bit of annoyance the kids have expressed this but every time you lay this seat down whether just halfway or all the way folded up it slides forward all the way so then each time you have to pull up on the handle and scoot the scoot the seat back each time but that's kind of what you get in the SLE trim so pretty good leg room this is I mean look at the look at this leg room here I mean I've got I'm only 58 I don't but I do have longer legs but still adults are going to fit back here super comfortably got cup holders right here on the driver's side you still have the same kind of panel you got storage here storage there grab handle same kind of trim got your window lock for the rear mirror controls windows down up and down it is a power driver seat lumbar 10-way driver uh 10-way driver and passenger powered seat it, it, it comes with the cloth. You get the cloth seats, which really, they're pretty comfortable. Also, look at this. There's a little storage pocket right down in here, right down by your driver, the driver leg, kind of a little pocket. Put some stuff down there. So there's a ton of storage. Okay, we have our vent. Over here we have some of our safety stuff, traction control, parking assist, auto start stop. You can turn that off there. You can dis... You can disconnect or turn off the the outlets in the back drive mode selector so it's got auto four high two two high it's like a hill descent so when you toggle through that let's see about that or different drive modes so i've got trailer normal tow haul sport normal uh, here's our headlight control fog lights dimming the interior lights and screens this is the trailer brake controller now this this particular one didn't have the max tow package added however the dealer added this on and they claim this is the factory one and i can't there's no information in the owner's manual about how to use this so i'm not sure how to use this this brake controller but this is where the brake controller was go is going the steering wheel this is pretty standard for all gm chevy or, you know gmc chevy steering wheels just like in all the trucks as well but it's really really well laid out i really like the, the cruise control here you know set is down resume up this is turning on and off this is cancel uh, there's a gap adjustment on the collision avoidance warning system this is where the heated steering wheel option would go this does not have that this also does not have heated seats which when you have cloth seats it's really not that big of a deal to not have heated seats so if you have leather you probably want heated seats this area here is where you're controlling your your phone, voice command phone, and then here's where you're controlling this screen on the screen. Now the gauge cluster is all digital screen for 2022. A lot of good options on the screen. You can really customize these different gauge the the gauge screens. What you what the information you see here, down here, and over here, you can really adjust that and modify it, make and really customize. So there's a lot of different options. You're just kind of scrolling through some of the the basic information here. Uh, fuel economy goes through a drive summary speed things like that fuel economy is is pretty good I just we just towed probably a 200 miles with this so our, our economy is a little lower than had it had it would have, would have been otherwise the transmission control this is kind of a neat feature for for uh, the GM trucks this year. There's just push button transmission. We got park reverse is a pull, push neutral drive. You pull up, and then you got a low and plus or minus there. Steering the audio controls are all on the back of the steering wheel, and then we just have you know regular wipers. So it's it's regular cruise control. There's no there's no like super cruise or any of the advanced cruise control options it's really just regular cruise control regular wipers regular rear wipers so no automatic wipers things like that so kind of basic as far as the technology is concerned but this this new screen is really nice I really like the, the functionality the layout the look of this new screen you've got a home screen it does have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto so you can just connect your phone automatically every time you get in the car 
So you've got all these different settings here. The climate, the trailer lights, you've got the hotspot. Audio options, you've got, of course, your Sirius XM podcast. Kind of Google is kind of, there's a Google Assistant built in. As you can see that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. Center vents right here. Here's our hazard button. And then there's a little pocket here that seems like, I don't really know what goes there, but it's kind of, there's just a pocket there to put some, some stuff. Climate control is, you do have dual climate control. You can sync them. Here's your controls here, your fan control. And then here's where you adjust the rear climate. Turn it on or off. You just push rear climate and rear climate shows up you can sync it with the rear you can adjust it or you can just let the rear passengers mess with it if you want to that's kind of that's kind of nice uh, two cup holders here no wireless charging pads so for example like right here there's just a little spot to put your phone you got USB-C and USB-A port right there and then you also have those in here as well you've got two uh, USB-C and USB-A Big center console here. We've already got this thing filled with all of our junk, so it's a good good thing. Good place to put all your stuff. This lifts out. You got some deep storage in there, and there's a nice little light that shines down in there. But yeah, this is not wireless a charging pad. This is a good spot to put your phone or down in there. No home link. Really pretty basic here. Just lights here. You can turn your dome on and off and your OnStar buttons. Glove box, there's just the one glove box here. It is lockable. And then your passenger controls. Right in there. I want to do just some driving, some driving with, that's really where this vehicle shines. I mean, this thing just handles great. City, highway, super comfortable. The driving position's really good. The, the driver's seat adjusts really well, so you can really get it into a position that's comfortable. You can see out well. There's a little bit of a slope to the front, so you can really see over the hood, hood very well. If you can hear some of the engine sounds. The engine doesn't have a lot of noise coming from it. Usually you're cruising on the highway about 17, 1800 RPM. When you're accelerating around town, stoplights, you know, you'll get up to 3000. But these diesel engines, with them being a turbo, they really don't rev very high. I think the, I bet the... The RPM gauge says 6,000 is the max, but I, I bet 5,000 is probably about the max RPMs that this will rev up to. And with it being a 10 speed, it just it shifts through the gears pretty quickly. You don't hear the shifts very, very, they're not very loud. The engine's not loud. So you really don't know really what gear you're in because, you know, you, you know you're not hearing the gear shifts, which, which is great. So the, the drivetrain on this, I really like. This diesel engine, I'm really impressed with so far. You know, we've done some, I've done some towing, we've done some off-roading, we've done some highway driving, city driving. Now we have 1,600 miles, about 1,600 miles on this, and I'm I'm really impressed with this. Now, the big question is, is do you get the SLT version or do you cheap out like me and get the SLE version? Now, talking to my wife today, I was like, hey, what should we say in the video about what your thoughts are? And she's like. She's like she does miss the blind spot monitoring and the rear lift gate not being powered. She's like I, I would like those to be powered. I'd like there to be a blind spot. Blind spot monitoring it really seems like it's a big miss for GM that they wouldn't do that in this size of a vehicle, even as a standard feature in the SLE trim. I know the SLE is their base trim, but you know it wouldn't be that much more. But then again, they have to do something to justify these higher prices for the higher trims. So just as an, as an example, the SLT trim is going to be probably bare minimum SLT trim compared to the SLE is going to be a $7,000 minimum. Now, if you want like memory seats and a bunch of other features, you've got to pay $2,500 or $3,000 more for a, for a package upgrade. There's really not that option in the SLE. It'd be, it'd be awesome if they had just like a, if they had a, an option where you could get like heated seats, blind spot monitoring, rear tailgate, powered and you pay like fifteen hundred dollars on the on the SLE trim. That would be that would be the perfect upgrade because it would get you those simple 
electrical upgraded items that you kind of miss out on on the SLT, but you could get it in the SLE and add it. It's add fit as fifteen hundred dollars of the package. You get that, and they'd be really be the perfect package. But you can't do that. You've got to go SLT, which is at least seven grand. But the way you'd probably configure it would be close to nine thousand dollars more. So I was talking to my wife. I'm saying, well, do you do you think that the blind spot monitoring and the rear lift gate not being power and the seats being cloth is that worth nine thousand dollars to upgrade? I think we both agreed that no, that's not. It's, I don't think it's worth it for the SLT trim because you can still get the same powertrain, you can get the same colors. Yeah, the wheels are 18 inches and in cloth, but it's really, it really feels nicely appointed inside the vehicle. It drives nice, handles great, especially if you have kids. I mean, we have kids that just kind of are rough on vehicles. You know, the kids just are. You know, we're we have four kids, so we just took this on a road trip, and it was fantastic to have. We had two kids in the second row, two in the third row, so they had a you know a, a space between each kid, and they just they did great. They didn't fight. There wasn't arguing. There wasn't you know he's touching me, she's touching me. None of that. So having the full first, or second row, and third row up, and then all the cargo area in the back really was fantastic to, to to road trip. So this is the ultimate road trip vehicle. If you have five or six kids or even more, you can actually get in the SLE trim, you can get this, this center console can be a flip up seat. So you could actually have a bench seat up front and you could get it configured as a nine passenger vehicle, which is, uh, you know, great. If you have seven kids, that's the way to, that's the way to do this. But I don't think it's worth it. The, I don't think it's worth the SLT upgrade. It's really not. I just, I don't think it is. Where this thing shines, this powertrain, you can get the, the Duramac, you can get the 10-speed, you can get the powertrain that you want in the SLE trim, and it works out pretty well. Now, the manual seats in the back are a little bit of a sticking point in that they're not powered, so smaller kids are not going to be able to, to like lift the seat up or move the seat forward or move it back. My kids are a little older. My oldest is 13. And then I've got an 11-year-old and a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old. So the 6-year-old's not really doing much of the seats. But the other, the other three are able to move the seats around as needed. So, you know, I don't think that's that big of an issue. That's not big of a deal. If you have all the really small kids that are all in car seats, you probably want to do SLT because you can't do, you can't do bucket seats in the SLE. You have to get a bench seat in the second row. In the SLT, you can get bucket seats, and if you have to constantly use the back seat and kids have to get in and out, you know, having those bucket seats in the second row is probably a better situation for younger kids. But I like the I like that we have eight passenger capacity. That's really nice. We're always taking kids and kids' friends and just you know, or taking grandparent. You know, when we go when we go road tripping or go down to see grandma and grandpa, you know, it's like all. All, all six of us and then grandma and grandpa can ride with us too and we got all eight of us so it's nice to be able to have that eight person capacity that you don't get with the bucket the bucket get the bucket seats you don't you never have that option for three in the second row you're always just kind of stuck with seven a seven seat capacity vehicle so i'm just on the highway here i'm just cruising at high, it's at 70 miles an hour i'm just cruising at 70 and road noise is very limited these tires are nice. You know, these 18-inch tires, you really give it a smooth, comfortable ride on the highway. It really soaks up bumps and any kind of imperfections in the road, really not feeling much. I think track's really straight, really... I mean, it's, the car's new. The, the vehicle's new, so it should, it should do all this. But as far as just being able to, to, to drive this and this thing just soak up miles, this thing can just drive and makes it makes it very comfortable makes a very comfortable driving experience in this on the road i like that this has good mpg in the city also if you get the v8 you get the the 5.3 liter v8 you're not getting as good as fuel economy as you can with this diesel now the argument obviously is diesel is more expensive and that's usually true but you know you're getting much better economy in the city in this vehicle than you are with the gas and even better on the highway you know 30 almost 30 miles of the gallon on the highway going highway speeds i mean that's awesome you'll get 20 21 with the gas engine so you're looking at uh, nine almost nine miles of the gallon difference and this has more torque than than the than the v8 
the 5.3 V8. It has the same torque number as the 6.2 liter. The 6.2 liter isn't an option in the SLE, but you have the, you know, as you get to the upper trims, 460 pound-feet of torque in this in this vehicle really really gives the power down low. And where it's nice is like city driving. You know, when you're like pulling out in front of cars, you're changing lanes, you're making left-hand turns, or you know, there's times where you just need to accelerate quickly. You need to, you know, turn, make a left-hand turn to turn in front of traffic. You just need the, you just need the car to go. This thing has that RP, that that lo, that torque down low that's really making it nice and making it just kind of zippy right through traffic. So I, I really like how this handles in traffic. And then on the highway, if you have to pass, if you're passing because you have that that torque and that 10-speed transmission, it feels like the power is always on tap. It's always in the right gear. You know, just a slight press of the pedal, and I'm jumping up five to ten miles per hour to make that pass or to merge, into, merge on the highway. Road noise is very minimal. The, the engine, I can't even hear. Right now I'm at, let's see, I'm at 70 miles an hour. That's the speed limit. And I'm probably at 15 to 1600 RPMs. Just super low RPMs. That's why this thing is getting such good gas mileage because it just, you know, it, on the highway it's just running at a low RPM. And then that 10-speed transmission, you know, is just keeping it in that lower that lower RPM range. So you're not hearing the hum of the engine. All you're hearing is any kind of road noise from the tires. And these 18-inch wheels, you know, they really make it a comfortable ride. So I'm impressed with this drivetrain. That's the most impressive part of this vehicle. All right, I'm at a stoplight, and from the stoplight, I'm gonna I'm really gonna accelerate hard just so you can kind of hear the engine under a hard acceleration. I think you'll find that it's really not very loud. It's not intrusive. It's not annoying. It has a nice, it has a nice growl to it. It's, you know, it, you can tell it's not a V8. It's not the typical GM V8 growl. But it doesn't sound as bad as like the, like the Ford, like the Ford EcoBoost or the Ford, the Ford six cylinders that are turbocharged. They just don't have much of a sound to them. This has a decent sound. A little bit of a whine at the top of the range. I think I got up to 4,000 RPM and it starts shifting. So it doesn't let you rev that high. When you've got 10 speeds, it doesn't need to. You know, you're, you just, I probably got into sixth gear by 40, mile, by 40 miles an hour. So I don't even, you probably couldn't even hear anything. It's just, it's a slight, it's a slight uh, sound from the engine. But really, it's only under those hard accelerations are you even seeing it or, or, or hearing the engine. Yeah, I just passed the gas station. There's about a 50 right now. There's about a 50 cent difference between gas and diesel. Uh, now, most of the place I'm in northern Utah. Most of the places here are still doing a winterized diesel blend. So usually in winter, the diesel is more expensive. Once they once they go to a summer blend, usually that lowers the prices a little bit. Uh, so you know, most of the diesel around here is right around five dollars, and regular is probably mid mid fours for regular unle unleaded. Okay, just in the car wash, getting the car cleaned up here, and uh, just want to convey how much I'm impressed with this vehicle. The drivetrain, the comfortability, how it works, how it drives, highway, city. I think this is a great overall vehicle. So really impressed with this. Hopefully you found this review, this overview helpful, informative, entertaining, what have you. Uh, stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to keep updating. I'm going to keep going through and just, you know, making some more videos about this vehicle. I'm going to do a more in-depth towing vehicle, more miles per gallon maintenance, things like that. So as things come up, I'm going to make videos. But thanks for watching the video. And hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.